That parking lot is normally full, Monday through Friday. Now it's empty due to the fact that we are on strike. We are fighting for what we deserve. You can't expect these workers to make cars they can't afford to buy. This is just not about the UAW. This is about all active employees across the United States because what happens here will happen everywhere. But it's been a long time coming. It's history in the making. No deal, no wheels. <laughs> For the first time in history, the United Auto Workers Union is striking against all big three automakers at once. About 12,700 workers committed to a work stoppage at three locations. The UAW is demanding pay raises of more than 40% for its members to match the pay raises of CEOs of the companies. The strike became official overnight when that midnight deadline hit without a deal. All of you know that there was once a time when a union job in the automobile industry was the gold standard for the working class in America. Well, we are determined to bring those days back again. What do we want? When do we want it? Now. And if we don't get it? Peers put one man higher than another, and it shouldn't be that way. Because you've got two people that do the same job at the same time. Tier one gets to enjoy his family working 40 hours a week. The tier two guy has to, to work 60 to 70 hours a week just to make the same amount of pay that you're close to the tier one guy. He goes home at night, can't even hold his baby no more because he can barely hold his hands. Mm -hmm. Spends time soaking in hot baths because he can barely move. The big three, they have no, all them CEOs, they have no idea what it feels like to be able to wake up in pain almost every day because we work those six or seven days out the week and we have no time to rest our bodies. They don't understand that and they don't get what it's like trying to figure out if you're going to be able to eat or put food on your family's table the next day. They don't get that at all. If we signed up for the UAW's request, instead of making money and distributing $75,000 in profit sharing in the last 10 years, we would have lost $15 billion and gone bankrupt by now. You've seen a 34% pay increase in your salary. You make almost $30 million. Why should your workers not get the same type of pay increases that you're getting? We think we have a very competitive offer on the table, and that's why we want to get back there and get this done. Last year, these companies spent $9 billion not to improve the lives of their workers, but to pay for stock buybacks and dividends to make their wealthy stockholders even richer. Meanwhile, the average wage for American auto workers has decreased by 30% after adjusting for inflation. Do you want to know why you're out on strike right now? That's the reason. Without our labor, this country couldn't function. They say that we're asking for too much, but really it's the CEOs and the corporate leaders that are having too much. There's no reason that they should be making, you know, three, four hundred times more than what I make or what my union brothers and sisters make. Are you really, is your time really worth three or four hundred times more? Do you really work three or four hundred times harder than we do? No, you don't. Every human being wants to provide a better life for their family. That's what we work for. That's what we go to work every day for. So a 40% raise, that would finally make us feel like what we're doing is actually respected. Since 1948, COLA, the cost of living adjustment, has been part of every single UAW contract until 09. You all took the biggest hit. Plant closures destroyed communities. You guys got rid of code. You did everything you were supposed to do so you can keep them afloat. And now that you're all struggling, our retirees are struggling, now they want to turn their backs to you while they give themselves 300 to four times more in pay. They want to use scare tactics now, saying we're going to wreck the economy. In their economy, one of our workers would have to work 400 years to make what a CEO makes in one year. We're not going to wreck the economy. We're gonna wreck their economy. I like how Sean Fain is aggressive. The thing about Sean Fain's leadership is he's accountable to the membership. He's the first UAW leader that was directly democratically elected by the membership. You know, he's, he's actually doing what the members want. He's taking our demands. They're not the president's demands, but the members' demands and taking them to the companies. You know, it's not just about him having a cushy job at Solidarity House or being a big time union boss. It's about fighting for your members. And so I respect him for that. Walter Ruther, when he built the UAW back in the day, he, uh, 
worked hard to build a foundation combined by the big three that everybody wanted to work for. If you were a UAW auto worker, that was a dream job. Sean's leading us back into that direction again. He's kind of like, the, to me, like the big brother I need in order for somebody to lead me and help me grow more within the union with my union brothers and sisters. I'm prepared to fight to the end and I hope everybody's ready, because I'm ready. <laughs> The only way that you're gonna get economic justice in your life is by coming together with other working class people. Our only clout as a class is to withhold our labor. And through withholding our labor collectively and acting in concert, we can have power to make this economy work for working class people. Together we stand in solidarity. In solidarity we stand together. And together we're unstoppable. Union! 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 Thank you so much for watching our video. If you'd like to see more stories like this one, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel to get more More Perfect Union in your feed. And if you have any ideas for stories that you would like for us to investigate, just drop them in the comments below.